So last video for this week, I have here part of an actual bot corral. So as we keep going and we get familiar with more and more of these basic chord progression things, um, we can start analyzing more and more real literature. So bot corrals, as I mentioned in the last video, are a good place to start. Um, so we're just doing this little section, but that's why there's this fermata here. Um, very common. Go look at bot corrals. You'll see what I'm talking about. Um, but let's see if we can't go through here. We're in the key of A. A major. Let's see if we can't go through here and analyze these four part chords using your Roman numerals. I'm going to give you a chance to pause. Beware there are a couple of things in parentheses. This one right here, this one right here. They happen a lot in chorales um, and those are non-chord tones. We'll talk about different types of non-chord chord tones later. You can have passing tone, neighbor tone, um, all sorts of uh, things like that. Uh, for now, don't analyze them. Okay, just leave them there. Analyze what's on either side of them as a four part chord. Okay, ready, go. Okay, so I'm going to start out towards the beginning, and again, you might have your own process, so I'm going to start out by doing all of the work, and then we'll kind of get quicker as, as we go along. Um, but this first chord, shocker, is going to be a one. Okay, so we have A, E, A, C, so you've got a chord with these letters in it. If you look up those letters on your cheat sheet, you know it's an A major chord in the key of A, one. Okay, on the next one, we have D, D, F, A. If you look that up in your key signature, you know that D is the root, and you know that that is going to be a four chord. Okay, and again, you can go back, you can do all of this as long as there's no accidentals in here. These fit in the key signature, um, so, uh, so you can just look at the letters and be good to go. Um, but if you feel more comfortable, absolutely add those because they do exist in the key signature. Okay, so after four, sorry, we had a, I put the fermatas in the wrong spot, so I covered them up with little papers just to keep it clean because I didn't want to cross them off. Um, after your four chord, you have, did anyone find it? It's a seven, diminished seven chord. Okay, and if you were to analyze this passing chord, by the way, um, essentially what this does, and this is just a side thing because I told you not to write it in, um, but essentially what this does, it kind of, and if you don't follow this, this is okay, it kind of turns into a 4-7 chord. It's a 7th chord, but in an inversion. Like, it, it, functionally, if you were to listen to it, it sounds a little, just for that split second while that note is playing, it sounds a little bit like this. Okay? Um, anyway, but that's just a little side note. It doesn't have to be written in there right now. Um, from here, we go back to a 1 chord. From there, we have a five chord, but did you notice um, it's a five chord, but the root's not on the bottom. It's a, it's a five, six. It's an inversion, it's in first inversion. So you've got your E, G sharp, B, just like you should for a five chord, but on the bottom is the third, it's that G sharp. So you're actually in first inversion. Um, from there, you move to a four chord, you can see that from the uh, from the notes that are involved, but again, it's not in root position. It's in first inversion. You've got your F sharp on the bottom. Okay, from there we have a five seven chord, but it's not in root position. Um, it's actually in first inversion, which gives us six five. Remember all of this from before? If you just wrote five, four, five for that first time through, that's still pretty good. Um, just notice from here on out, um, if, it's not, if, if it's not the root in the baseline, um, you've got to have a, a six for, for first inversion, a six, four for second inversion. If it's a seventh chord, first inversion has six, five, second inversion has four, three, and third inversion has four, two. And the, the sourcing of those numbers, where those came from and why, we can discuss it another time. It's something called figured bass is also from box time um, and earlier. And, uh, and, and they do have a reason for why those numbers, but for now, just trust me and use the numbers. And then we hold on this chord, which is a one, but it's not the end. Okay, from here after the fermata, 
we have a one chord also. It's still a one chord, but now it's in first inversion. And from there, we go to a four chord that's in first inversion. We have another little passing tone. We can talk about that one another time for now, just, you know, skip it. And we'll go to this chord here. We have a two. And notice, I should have warned you about this at the beginning and I didn't. Um, this is actually a seventh chord. <laughs> Let's see what we have here. Whoops, I got ahead of myself. I was already looking at here. Okay, so four, uh, four first inversion goes to one, I apologize. Some of you were looking at that going, what is she doing? Well, that's what it is. Okay, so it's actually a one, I'm so sorry. And then we have a two chord. This is an interesting one. Um, I mentioned before that the five chord is often the one that you will see built as a seventh chord. The other one that you see built as a seventh chord sometimes is the two, okay? And that's what we see here. So let's see what kind of pitches we have. We have D, we have F, A, and a B. If you were to line that up, you have these pitches, right? Which makes sense. B is the second degree of the scale. It's a two chord. And you actually have a seventh built in there, right there in the alto line, okay? So knowing that with this on the bottom, it's a seventh chord, with D on the bottom, you're in first inversion. This is actually two, six, five. Then we have five and we end on one. Again, we've got this little authentic, perfect cadence at the end. So this is how you analyze things. Now, once again, this is the first time that we've done this. Um, if you missed some of the inversions, totally cool. But if you're looking at a, um, at a chord and you see this just doesn't line up the way I think it's gonna, um, it could be something like this. It could be that you're thinking that the root is the wrong thing. Um, so, so double check your, your, your um, cheat sheets and look through every single pitch in whatever chord that is and go, man, that's got to be this seventh chord. Then you would probably have gotten to this conclusion on your own. I should have warned you ahead of time, but I didn't. I'm sorry. Um, in any case, work on those uh, those inversions as well. And I'm just going to put this up here in case uh, in case you need to add it to your notes. But with regular old triads, remember that first inversion, you would have a six. Second inversion, you would have a six, four. Okay, so those are your triads. For seventh chords, you have first inversion is six, five, second inversion, four, three, and third inversion, four, two. Okay, so if you need to jot that down somewhere, um, those are your symbols for for your inversions, okay? But all that tells you is what's in the root. I mean, I built this up like this, root third, fifth, seventh, but that's not really the order it was in. It didn't necessarily, D, F, A, actually it was, it actually was D, F, A. It doesn't always go in the same order. Sometimes it's, uh, it, it's flip-flopped around. Okay, so anyway, that's your first Bach analysis. I'm going to give you a, a real score to look at this week and see if you can analyze it yourself. And we'll go over it in either a Zoom class or a video next week.